If you're anything like me, you have not played Halo Infinite in quite a while. Some people have not even played in more than a year, and honestly, I can't blame you. The way that this game came out was a massive disappointment, and it didn't hold a candle to previous entries in the series. Well, my question today, is it worth revisiting Halo Infinite? My name's Fanta, you're watching Fantavision, and I want to discuss all of the things that they have added to Halo Infinite and whether or not it is too little too late or if maybe we should give it a second chance. So right away, what did they add? They've added a bunch of new maps. They've actually added Halo 3 maps, which is pretty crazy. They've added some Halo 2 maps, Halo 3 maps, as well as a couple other classic maps as well, like Zanzibar. They brought back Zanzibar or Last Resort, whatever you know it as. They brought back Guardian. They're bringing back... Okay, get this. I wanted to save this for later, but I'm just too excited about it. They're bringing a Halo 3 only playlist in November. It's called Halo 3 Refueled, and it is going to have these maps. I don't know why it's Mountain Dew related. I mean, Halo and Mountain Dew have been like this forever, so maybe that's why. And there's even a Mountain Dew map, critical dew point that they're adding. A dew-inspired uh, map in the game, and that will come out with um, Season 5's Combined Arms absolutely gorgeous actually it's also full of easter eggs as well you may notice it's also inspired by halo 3's foundry forge canvas it features nods Ooh. to halo players favorite beverage of course and it's also meant to encourage fast-paced action of the classic halo esports scenes for that playlist in november i don't know if this is gonna be a permanent map it probably will be but it's just funny to see a mountain dew map and I'm just really excited to play all of these old Halo 3 maps. There, Like I said, there are some already in the game. They brought back Valhalla, and I'm just so happy. It's like a huge shot of nostalgia, and it really answers that question I have for so many other shooter games, including Halo. Why don't you just bring the best of the previous game's maps to the new one? Why don't you always do that? Always carry forward more maps because nobody is gonna complain, oh, there's too many maps, too much content. That is not something you're gonna hear anyone ever say. Speaking of massively expanding things, because they massively expanded the number of maps, the playlist count is so much better than the anemic, pathetic playlist count that they had at launch, which if I remember correctly, didn't even have Team Slayer, something crazy like that. Now there are so many different playlists to choose from, and there's constantly a new event going on, with a specific playlist for that event. Now, they did finally add a level system. Unfortunately, this level system doesn't unlock anything. So you might be thinking, well, that's pointless. Why do I care? Honestly, it's still fun to level up. It just is. It is nice to kind of have a tracker of how much time you've spent in the game, which is exactly the purpose that they have it for. However, I would argue it would be nice to maybe unlock some things through there. And 343 going back and adding things as unlocks for that type of progression system, that would be huge. People would be very happy about that, including myself. Because yeah, right now it kind of feels pointless. I guess I'm just glad it's there, but it would be nice for it to have some other purpose than going, oh look, I've played this many hours, so I am this ranking. I would love to say I've played this many hours, and this ranking, and that has unlocked this thing for me. You're not gonna miss out on any money. It's not gonna deter people from getting the battle pass just because there are also unlockables with that other progression system. Following the same vein of the progression system, of, unfortunately, all the unlocks are still just in the battle pass. However, the challenges to get the XP to unlock the things in the battle pass are so much better. Before there were highly specific challenges, which it sounds like making challenges vague and not like you have to really pay attention to them, that might take away from the challenges since they're not even really challenging anymore, but I would argue that those were ruining the game because they were determining how people were playing it. If you have to stick somebody with a plasma grenade 10 times and you're playing Team Slayer or Capture the Flag, that player that has to do that challenge is going to just keep trying to sticking people with the plasma grenades and they're just going to spend the whole time tracking down those grenades to get that challenge taken care of. 
And that just ruins the game for not only that player, because, I mean, that's not that much fun just hunting down grenades trying to complete that challenge, but it also ruins it for the entire team, because this guy is now going to die a million times just trying to get the grenades in Slayer, and isn't paying attention to the objective at all in any sort of objective-based game mode. So getting rid of those highly specific challenges is a great thing and a great step in the right direction. I don't know why it took so long for that to happen, but I'm just glad it happened. Transitioning over to more things you can unlock. Thankfully, the helmets can be swapped between armor cores and all of your new unlocks for the color of your armor are going to work on all the armor cores as well. Now, I would like for them to retroactively make all those colors work for all armor cores and I would argue that it would be nice to have the colors work on all weapons, you know, that'd be cool. You unlock it for one weapon, you get it for all of them. Be kind of nice, especially since they're not tied to any sort of progression anyway. In Call of Duty, it makes sense. You need this many kills or this many headshots, you get this certain skin. Halo doesn't have that. So once you unlock a skin for a weapon, it'd be nice if it was just on all of the weapons. But it is nice that you can use helmets across all armor cores. I would still argue, hey, how about you get rid of all of the armor cores? Thanks. Nobody actually cares about those. Just give us the pieces of armor. Let us create our own Spartans. It's that easy. Now, since it's been a while since either you or I have played this game, there are a ton of battle passes that you have missed and that I have missed. Now, normally in a free to play live service game, it means tough luck. You don't get any of those items. Congratulations, you missed out. Halo Infinite doesn't play into FOMO with battle passes, and that makes me so happy. Whenever a battle pass comes out, that battle pass is now forever available. You can always switch over to it. You can always buy it. You can do whatever you want, and that's amazing. When you buy that battle pass, you get all the items in it guaranteed. Whereas other games, you buy the battle pass, you better play like it's your job or you're gonna miss out on something that you already paid for. But the fact that you've paid for that battle pass means you should just have it. And Halo Infinite gets that and that's great. All video games should do that. So the cool thing is about Halo Infinite, they finally did add, well, I guess finally, season two, they added premium currency into the battle pass enough for the next battle pass. So if you buy nothing in the store, you complete season two, you can get season three. You complete season three, you get season four, you complete season four, you get season five, so on and so forth. Just don't buy season one because it doesn't have any of the premium currency in it. If you buy season one, congratulations, now you have to buy the next one. But if you buy season two, you get the rest essentially included in that premium currency in that pass. So if you're willing to ignore the store, you can get all of the battle passes by buying one. Something else they've added that I think is awesome is the fact that you can now add AI to Forge. That's right. You can essentially create your own campaign levels if you want. That's freaking awesome. I would, <laughs> I cannot wait to see what people are making on the custom games area. And I can't wait to see what people put together, what kind of combat scenarios and levels people create. and. I, the fact that they have done so much with Forge mode and made it so easy for people to create just crazy creations. I mean, you take a look at these. These are just insane. There's just so much you could do with this tool. And I think every single game should at least have the capability of adding things in like this, whether it be modding or its own in-game creator like Forge, because you're adding infinite replay. And that's the thing about this game is, if we have enough people get back into Halo Infinite, this could be a new golden age of Halo. Now, if you don't like the gameplay of Halo Infinite, you're not gonna get back into it. But if the only reason you weren't playing Halo Infinite was because of content, no leveling system, things that should have been there at launch, yes, obviously all of this stuff should have been there at launch. But now that it's there, if people come back to the game, they breathe new life into it. I mean, there's infinite possibilities in this massive, server browser for custom games and the fact that they're bringing back old favorites from halo 3 and halo 2 if we see a massive spike in the community i guarantee leadership is going to take notice and they're going to keep updating this game and keep it alive and continue doing the good work they've been doing recently now if you're wondering why suddenly this is happening why all of a sudden this year 2023 is the year of Halo Infinite's redemption arc. Well, that's because so many people have left 343 
and the leadership has changed. So now I'm hoping with this leadership change, we'll keep seeing them go in this sort of direction where they're making the game how we the fans want it to be. And I am incredibly excited for the future of Halo Infinite. I never thought I would say that. I feel like I've heard nothing but bad news about this game since launch until all of these recent updates. Now I'm finally able to say I'm looking forward to seeing what Halo Infinite has to offer. Now, with all this content and stuff, is it worth revisiting? Well, obviously I just said I'm hoping people come back. I'm hoping the community comes back because I personally love the gameplay of Halo Infinite. I find it a ton of fun, especially playing with friends. It's free, so that's pretty cool. You don't have to worry about map packs and having anything like that. I remember back in the day, it's like, oh, well, let's go play this playlist. No, you have to buy the map packs before you can even get into the playlist. So as much as I hate microtransactions and all of that, at least we don't have to worry about not being able to play the game because we don't have map packs. And I feel like a lot of people forgot that that's what happened with Halo 3. At a certain point, once those map packs came out, if you didn't buy them, there were certain playlists you couldn't play in. And then Call of Duty had the same issue with map packs. Lots of games had that issues back in the day, so it's nice that they sort of have solved it, but it's another topic for another time. Anyway, I think it's worth revisiting Halo Infinite. This game is so much fun. I feel like Halo needs to be back in the fold. There really aren't that many first-person shooters out anymore. There's Call of Duty. I mean, Battlefield, uh, I guess. I, I guess it's get, getting better. I, apparently they've been adding lots of updates and the player base for that game has skyrocketed again. I don't know. It'll be a long time before I go back and try Battlefield, but I feel like this game, definitely worth going back to playing, trying it again. Because unfortunately, even though I feel like the game has really come into its own and has everything we wanted at launch and is full of content and worth playing, the player base still just isn't there. Yeah, it's the best it's been in like a year, but still, I mean, the recovery time on this game, it's going to be a while. So I'm, I'm hoping more people make videos about it. I know the act man did, and he had a great point. All the old leadership is gone, out the door. Peter Hines is in charge, so what exactly would I be boycotting? It's different leadership now. They've put in the effort to add in all this content. So let's show them that their effort wasn't for nothing. Because this is what we've been wanting. We've been wanting more maps. We've been wanting more content. We've been wanting more playlists. We've been wanting all these different things. Now it's here. Now is the time to play, if you're a fan of Halo like I am. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below what your thoughts are on Halo Infinite. If you're willing to give it another try, please do like the video if you guys liked it. Subscribe for more content. And as always, have a fantastic day. See you, everybody.